Good evening. Welcome to the January 23rd, 2023 Parks and Recreation Commission meeting. All rise and Ethan Short will uh, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Went a little out of order there, but we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, can you confirm that the meeting is posted in accordance with the uh, Nevada Revised Statutes, please? Yes, it is. Thank you. We'll open up the meeting for public comment. This uh, public comment period applies uh, only to matters on the agenda. Uh, the speakers will have about five minutes to, to speak. Uh, seeing no one in the audience, there is a phone line available. You may call 702 589 nine six two nine if you'd like to comment again that number is seven zero two five eight nine nine six two nine Ms. Bunk confirming there are no emails. Correct, there are no emails. Thank you. Again, this is the public comment period. Uh, anybody wishing to comment may call 702-589-9629. One more time, this is the open comment, or the, excuse me, the public comment period. And anyone wishing to speak, may call 702-589-9629. Okay, we'll close public comment. Our first uh, action item is to approve the minutes from the November 28th, 2022 meeting. I have a motion to approve those minutes. A second. We have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. At this time, I'd like to uh, uh, welcome uh, Rod Woodbury, our Thank newest uh, elected member of the Parks and Rec Commission. Rod, welcome. Thank you. And uh, that's it. Thank you, welcome, Rod. Yeah, we, uh, Ethan Short is a student who's joined us. Uh, he was introduced. Uh, it, he was in the audience last week. Oh, he was? Okay. Last month, wasn't he? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> I was on the phone, so I couldn't tell where he was sitting. <laughs> Our next um, action item is for discussion and appointment of a Parks and Rec Commission chairman and vice chairman. So let's uh, do the chairman first. Do we have a nomination or any discussion for uh, chair? I motion for Scott Henson. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. You want to be chairman, right, Scott? I do. <laughs> okay. okay, and then uh, we need a vice chair. Uh, do we have any nomination for vice chair? Hearing none, I'd like to nominate Rose Hess. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Congratulations, Rose. Thank you. You want it? Yeah. Too late. <laughs> uh, next I action item is items pertaining to the Boulder City Muni course and the Boulder Creek Golf Course. We need to approve that those reports. Do I have a motion to approve those reports? I'll move to approve. Thank you. Do you have a second? I'll second that. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, port, those reports are approved, and we have a verbal report now from uh, Director Hall on the maintenance issues and playability of those courses. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 
you know, maintenance workers at both golf courses are vi uh, very busy this time of year. And I asked Matt Atkin, the superintendent of Boulder Creek, to give me kind of a rundown. So winter mowing and trimming is needed. Uh, again, pine cone and leaves on a daily cleanup throughout the course. They're trimming the low-hanging tree branches throughout the course. They're cleaning the DG, which is the uh, areas along houses on the back nine, 12 to 15 of weeds and debris. Uh, weed eating and edging all the bunkers, pushing sand around in the bunkers from the high areas to the low areas. Uh, locating all the valve boxes. Uh, they're replacing a lot of old lateral valves with new valves. Cleaning around the clubhouse and the parking lot, filling in the cart path entrances and exits as needed and edging the cart paths. On the Boulder Creek side, they're trimming trees along the cart paths, trimming the bushes along the cart paths. If you look at, uh, you walk out the back door of the Boulder Creek and take a look at the lake, all the cattails were, were removed at the number one T Desert Hawk, and it really opened. I'll have a picture here I'll pass around, but it really opened up. Uh, they're also looking at uh, replacing some of the sand in the greens bunkers at Boulder Creek, and what they're doing is they're, um, they're testing, they, they pick three different types of sands that they're using on the driving range and uh, kind of comparing them to see how they fare with the wind and how they fare with the golfers. And then a uh, selection will be made. And then at a later date, the greenside bunkers at Boulder Creek will be, uh, will be uh, done. One of the things that they're gonna do is put down a, um, a barrier for, so the little rocks don't come up. They have to, uh, kind of blow off the greens before they mow the greens in the morning because of all the little rocks that have worked their way up because no barrier was put down when we first put in in the bunker. So that'll be done. And they'll be applying, uh, applying pre-emergent throughout the golf course to inhibit weeds and also painting uh, our second application of paint before Super Bowl and college events. At Boulder Creek, we're, we're painting basically the, uh, and, th and some thrown in some iron as well, but painting the, uh, the tee boxes and the fairways and also the greens as well to keep the green color. So everything's working well uh, with the golf course. A little golf statistics is amazing here. Both golf courses uh, had record numbers for 2022. The revenue and rounds at both co golf courses have increased just about every month since May of 2020. A few numbers for you, Boulder Creek revenue for 2022 increased $500,000 compared to the 221, which, is, which was also a record year. Uh, Muni numbers are also impressive with almost 20,000 more rounds of golf in 2022 compared to the pre-pandemic numbers of 2019. For the golf professional contract, the city receives all golf rounds for the green fee revenue. So golf courses are doing a great job. Andy Shaper, our golf manager, is and his staff are, are doing a great job at both golf courses. And Turf Tech is also doing a great job keeping the course looking good, you know, for our, our players. So we're we're smile we have smiley faces on for the golf in Boulder City, and hopefully it, it, it'll continue into the spring. So any questions? Yeah. Uh, Roger, I was wondering how security issues there. Are they still having to bring the portable police department out there because of battery theft and stuff like that? We put a, um, a camera on in the, um, actually in the north end of the parking lot, and that's a, a camera that's um, in there. And then for big events, we bring in the, uh, the trailer. And so it, it's, uh, I haven't heard of any other, you know, um, vandalism or, um, you know, theft in the cars, but it uh, seems to be working. And if you do that, you're, you're going to get caught because we'll get your license plate and uh, you'll have to deal with the Boulder City Police Department. So we're, we're happy there, too. And I was wondering, are most of the, a lot of the golf things, are they special events? Like, uh, I, I've seen, like, uh, other states and schools and stuff over there participating in playoffs or something like that. Well, Andy, Andy has done a great job over the years in getting working with the NCAA to get some of the college. I think we have a total of what nine events. Uh, Andy said nine events uh, coming up uh, with co uh, college championships. I think next year we have a Division Three uh, championship, the actual championship for Division Three here at Boulder Creek, and then the year after we have the uh, the men's. Uh, 
I think it's Division Two, and then we have a Division Two Women's Championship in the next year. So uh, they like the course. The course is in great shape. It's uh, uh, the customer service is great. They like the staff, and and Annie's done a great job in fostering that relationship with the NCAA. So. Has there been any progress with the elite RV thing that's supposed to be out there? I haven't. That, you know, again, the, the process with that, it's, it's probably going through the next step. Yes. You know, uh, nothing's been decided yet, but I think it's, uh, it's proceeding through. So. Any additional questions regarding the golf courses? Okay, move on to our next item, item number four for possible action uh, with the Recreation Division. Uh, we need to approve those reports. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the uh, reports from those various programs? To approve. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And those reports are approved. And now we have a verbal report <clears throat> from Program Coordinator Jennifer Spinklink, who I don't see. I will be doing that report. <laughs> Thank Jennifer, you, Jennifer is um, uh, is not here today, so um, I will be doing it. Um, Basically, uh, we're very excited of our new software system that we've just have, uh, put into um, play at the Recreation Center that enables all our participants to register online. So far, we are happy with the performance. Office staff has been very busy helping everyone create accounts and signing up for classes. We even have a computer uh, that you can log into uh, by, the, by the front uh, door, or not the, the door to the uh, office area there and we're happy to help you in, in logging in. Uh, we've received a lot of positive feedback from that. We're, we're all still learning uh, the, the new, uh, new way of doing things, but all in all, I think we're pretty satisfied with the, with the project. Uh, I'd like to thank Julie uh, and, and the staff for uh, spending hours and hours uh, learning the new process, and I think, uh, I think it's gonna be a, a great addition to for, for parks and recreation. So anything you'd like to say about it, Julie? Yes, um, I will just let you know it, it's been 20 days since we launched the online registration system and it's been a year in, um, in process where we demoed uh, about six different software programs and then narrowed it down based on um, compatibility with how we operate and affordability, what we could afford. Um, and then it took about six months of implementation and um, training and creating the program for our residents. So it did go live on January 3rd, which was, might not, might not have been the best day because that was right after New Year's, Christmas holiday, right after having a um, holiday on that Monday. But we were happy when we came in and saw that uh, local resident at 4 a.m. from the comforts of their couch or home <laughs> um, did the first online registration for a safe key payment, which was amazing and delightful. And we thought, OK, it's going to be all right. We're going to get through this. Um, so in the past 20 days, we've had over um, 1,000 registrations into the new system. 691 of them have been online. And then 429 of them have been um, have been coming coming in person. So that alone is um, kind of a nice statistic just to be able to share. And that's really one of the nice things about this new upgraded system is that we're going to be able to capture a lot more data that was um, uh, very cumbersome to even try to um, to get some of those figures. So we're really looking forward to being able to get some raw numbers and be able to share that and have a, a better um, performance and way we do business based on some of the data that we are capturing. So there's actually been a thousand individuals, um, residents and non-residents alike, and some special event coordinators and out-of-towners who have logged into the system and have registered. Typically when somebody calls now, they'll call to say, oh, I would like a, to make a payment for XYZ, and the first thing we'll say is, have you logged into our new registration system? And they'll be like, oh, I've done lots of stuff. And it was like, okay, well, in the last 20 days, we have a new registration system. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, I can register at home. So people are loving it. It has been a huge learning curve um, for our department and for residents as well. Um, but uh, so we're embracing it and moving forward. That's and all things it. parks and recreation that you can pay for? I mean, whether it's a, a wedding or all reserving a gazebo or so the pool? I will, or? I will say yes and no. 
Um, uh, as far as any uh, facility rentals, yes, you can go in there and you start the process. You basically request the ability to rent that facility. From there, we get your request and then we'll reach back out to you to say, yes, it's available or no, it's not available. Um, there is an online calendar that is created from registrations. And until we're absolutely sure that there's gonna be no overbookings or, or anything going on or any glitches with the system, right now what you can do is put in your request and one of the, um, uh, somebody in our staff will get back with you, create an invoice for you, let you know that it's been approved and give you the link to be able to pay it. And then there are some classes like at, um, at the swimming pool, if you're a level one swimmer, you might need to graduate from that class before you could go to level two. So some of those more intricate um, classes, you actually have to either be allowed to join the next level because you've passed the first one, or you can um, call in and register over the phone. We get your information that way. So some of the classes are a little bit more detailed oriented that you might not be able to. There's other things like if you join halfway through the month, you're not gonna be able to just change your fee. So you can either call in and we can change your fee, fee on our end or um, you know come into the office as well. So we'll still be able to um, service our uh, res residents and patrons in many different ways. They can be completely self-service and do it all on their own. They can come into our office or they can still call. Very good, thank you. We are also very excited to have a new instructor um, at at the Parks and Recreation. Whitney Moyer will be teaching yoga, youth yoga, in February for ages four to five and expanding to six and older starting in March. Safe key numbers are slowly increasing and our staff is doing a great job keeping them safe and busy. Uh, ABC Park is currently going through a sewer and pavement uh, sidewalk improvement uh, for the new, uh, or the new facility down there. It's a little tough for people to navigate to classes, but the construction team is very helpful in assisting individuals uh, to their classes. And that is all I have. Any questions? Any questions for Roger on this topic? No. Okay, we'll move on to a verbal report from the sports coordinator, Jamie Gowdy, who also not here. I assume you're Jamie today. I am Jamie today because Jamie can only be at one place, and right now it's at um, basketball, coaching um, the kids or uh, refereeing. So um, I will let you know, uh, men's basketball this winter, um, there was not enough teams to participate in that. We're looking forward to the summer league and hopefully having men's basketball out um, again this summer. Uh, other adult leagues that are on the horizon beginning next month is gonna be co-ed softball, women's volleyball, and co-ed volleyball. And that'll be a new thing, co-ed volleyball. There seems to be a lot of interest already. And so Jamie um, is said, you know what, let's try it. <clears throat> if it works, let's keep going. And if not, at least we gave it, a, gave it a try. So that'll be starting up in the spring as well. As far as youth sports, we have youth floor hockey that's currently going on for grades kindergarten through second grade. And that had an opening ceremony last um, Saturday, uh, followed by the beginning of the season and games already starting on Saturday. Uh, the donations for this um, season for the youth floor hockey were provided by Boulder City Sunrise Rotary, which helped pay for the jerseys and some of the sports equipment. So shout out to them. Um, we do have 14 teams participating, and that's 150 players, which is compared to 75 last year. Remember, they are free sports still up until um, 2024. So that's a huge... Um, huge jump in that. Uh, floor hockey for grades three through eight will begin starting in March after basketball is finished. And um, they are gonna have the sport group go up until eight to eighth grade. I'm not sure if it's the, um, the fact that it's free and parents are like, you're gonna do it, or what the case is, but there does seem to be a little bit more interest in the older age groups, which is nice because those numbers have, you know, kind of decreased the last couple of years. So we have been seeing an increase and we are gonna go ahead and have that floor hockey go up until eighth grade. Floor hockey is one of those uh, programs that people in this community just love. It's a little bit different than, than what, you know, maybe they're, um, that what they're having over the hill. So 
Youth basketball um, is going on. It's about halfway through. That's partially sponsored by Fisher Space Pen, which has helped um, pay for some of the uniforms for that. And then there's 14 teams and 150 players, and that's compared to 50 players this time last year for basketball. So ARPA funds have contributed approximately $12,000 for these two leagues um, so far, and it's just helped 300 kids play hockey and basketball. So it's really, really nice. It's great to see so many participants. Um, it has been a little bit of a staffing challenge because we're still um, low staffed and um, increased participation. So uh, Jamie and her assistant, uh, Zach Murphy, have been very busy trying to uh, coordinate all of those games and officiating, and they're doing a great job. So any questions on sports? Hearing none, we'll move on. Uh, and, and we'll just go right into Julie's next uh, bit is a verbal report regarding um, the recreation administrative items. Um, I provided for you a list of the special events that we currently have on the docket for the next 12 months, just so you can see what we're busy doing and coordinating for events coming to Boulder City that are so far on the books. Some other upcoming projects that we have coming up in the spring is we'll be resurfacing the outdoor courts, basketball court at Hemingway Park and at ABC Park. The one at ABC Park will be resurfaced and lined for both pickleball and, um, and basketball, and Hemingway Park will be um, basketball. We will also be um, replacing some playground equipment at Oasis and Broadbent, some due to age, some unfortunately due to vandalism, but that should be coming in the probably late spring where we'll be able to change out some of that, um, that equipment. Uh, the popularity of the outdoor basketball court, or I'm sorry, pickleball courts at Broadbent Park has been overwhelming. Um, there have been upwards of 15, 16 people there on a beautiful afternoon. Um, so it's nice that the community is out there and enjoying those um, multi-purpose courts at, um, at Broadbent. On this Thursday, um, we will be conducting a um, homeless census count throughout the um, Clark County area. It's one day a year, and we'll have two groups going out um, in our community to kind of get an idea of how many people, how many folks we have out there that are experiencing homelessness that happen to be around Thursday morning for us to um, get that information in for Clark County Social, Social Services. Then um, tomorrow, I did want everyone to know that our very own, the first and only director that Parks and Recreation has ever had for the city of Boulder City. There was one before you? <laughs> the only one that's ever mattered. Nobody can remember. <laughs> Nobody can remember before that. Nobody's alive. <laughs> the only one people remember. <laughs> will be recognized tomorrow night at the city council meeting for 45 years mm -hmm. of service. Wow, mm -hmm. congratulations. That's huge. Uh, Any questions? Bubblegum machine. <laughs> <laughs> no questions for, for Julie, or do you have one? No, I'm oh, good, sorry. thank you. Our next... Uh, Action item is to approve the reports of the Aquatic Division. Uh, do I have a motion to approve those reports? Motion to approve. And a second? Mr. Pickens, will you second? Would I'll you second? second? Okay. Yes. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Those reports are approved, and we have a verbal report from Cherie Brennan. Good afternoon. Am I on? <laughs> Okay, at the pool, let me start with uh, what happened today. Um, oh, no. oh no. Last night, I, I believe it's probably because of the wind we had last night, our heater went into lockout, so we um, made it through the morning, but then had to cancel our programming for this afternoon, and we left lap swimming up to the lap swimmers, whether they want to get in the cooler water or not. Um, the last time I checked it, it was down to about 80. I do have a pull, uh, heater tech coming tomorrow morning um, at 7.30. That's the earliest he could get here, and hopefully it's a simple fix. Often this happens with the wind, and it's just a sensor, um, but it'll still take a few to several hours to get the pool back up to the correct temperature. 
So we've already canceled tomorrow morning's aerobics classes as well. Um, as far as uh, classes in general, our water aerobics and pre-swim classes are almost always full, raring to go, wanting more. Um, our swimming lessons continue to have low numbers. That's partly this time of year. Partly we don't have enough instructors. I know you're tired of hearing me say that. Uh, I did train three new instructors between December and January. However, they won't be available till summer. Um, let's see. We had uh, Henry Melton from the HM Safety Certification Company. Uh, we've been doing some audits, so he came out for the second audit. Um, this is of our staff, not our facility. Um, and he determined that improvements have been made since September, but we're still lacking in our response times from the time you recognize something to being able to start providing care. So we will continue to work on that. <clears throat> Uh, we had one new lifeguard start about three weeks ago, and um, this helps. But of course, with teenagers and their crazy schedules and available, available, unavailable, um, it helps only a little. <laughs> we had um, a new water aerobics instructor start in December. Initially, she was subbing for Terry Grothy, who wanted to take the month off. But this month, she added her own class, which is Monday, Wednesday mornings. And I'm hearing great things from the patrons who are taking that class. So I think she, she's going to be a great addition to our crew. <clears throat> um, just to add a, an additional note as far as giving um, praise to a staff member, I would like to, she's not here, but praise Sierra Beggs, who's the assistant coordinator. She... Um, and I think the main office is benefiting from this. She created a whole binder of how to do rec desk, which is our new registration system. So she did a really good job on that. Um, and then the last thing I just wanted to um, mention is that I think revenue wise, we did okay for 2022, considering we've had so few swimming lessons, we were only $4,000 lower than last year, than 2021. I think that's decent. So I don't, specifically without um, really going in depth on this, I think it's because we do have such a big interest in water aerobics. So any questions for me? Hearing none, thank you, Sheree. Appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. Uh, ne next is uh, for action item is to approve reports for uh, bootleg canyon activities do I have a motion to approve that report motion to approve I'll second. and all in favor aye aye any opposed those reports are approved and we'll have a verbal report from director hall chairman sorry for the interruption there was no um, report for bootleg canyon for them to approve I'm sorry that's okay <laughs> You are correct. <laughs> but I do have a verbal report. <laughs> what, all right, well, let's just move on with the verbal report. We're all in favor of your verbal report. Already. Excellent, excellent. You know, mountain biking events at Boot Lake Canyon are very popular. Even now when it's freezing out there, on January 20th through the 22nd, uh, we hosted the Nevada State Champs uh, mountain bike race at Boot Lake Canyon. And this is part of the Boot Lake Canyon Gravity Racing Series that we uh, that is put on every January and so over the next six months we have um, six major events scheduled for bootleg Canyon and that's uh, during uh, you know the, the spring and then the summer and then the events will pick up again in the fall big time uh, because that's the best time of the year to ride bootleg Canyon uh, nothing to report on the aerial trail system uh, I know the building official is looking for a company uh, to inspect the existing apparatus because it's been out of commission for so long. We wanna make sure uh, it's inspected uh, before we, um, we do anything you know, with the system. Um, people are loving Boot Lake Canyon. I mean, it's a, it's a nice area to go to ride by. Scott, you, you ride up there. It's, uh, it's beautiful nature. You see a lot of animals up there and uh, people are really taking advantage of it. So any questions regarding Boot Lake Canyon? Have there been any interest from any other companies? 
Uh, we have uh, we have some interest there. We just need to make sure the apparatus is safe before we put out an RFP and see what's uh, what's really out there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Our last uh, item is uh, commission commission reports concerning facilities maintenance issues, various operations, and community events. So this is an opportunity for any uh, commission member to to uh, ask questions or make any comments. Val, do you have any anything to share? Or, Always. Yeah? <laughs> I, I knew I knew you would. <laughs> um, I don't know. This was kind of brought up in our last meeting. What's going on with like uh, the statues in the parks and stuff? Or is that up to the city council and whatever they're doing? I know we discussed it last meeting, and I don't know what staff, people have been asking me, and I don't know uh, what to respond. Well, what I know is that the uh, uh, there's a meeting, the city manager's meeting with. Uh, uh, certain city councilmen and uh, the group of people interested in, in the monument section of it. Um, I was not invited to the meeting, uh, so I don't know what uh, actually transpired. However, I know that meeting it, it took place or is taking place really soon. So uh, the next step is to be put on city council where they're gonna analyze the, the draft and, and make uh, any changes and approve the, uh, the concept of, of that. So um, I think it's coming down in the very near future, but I. I can't give you a date on that. That's funny. And how's like, uh, have there been any more problems with graffiti in, in any of the parks in general? Like we have, um, we have, the parks with cameras in, in them um, have slowed down quite a bit because we're, if you do it in a park with cameras, we're gonna catch you and you're gonna have to go see Judge Miller. So just keep that in mind if you wanna vandalize in our park system, however, some of the parks that we do have, uh, Julie has a picture of, of one of the plastic, big plastic slides. And this must have taken a big effort for a person to do this damage to the slide. And it's gonna cost us thousands of dollars to replace that wow. section of the slide. And this is big, heavy duty um, plastic. Wow. So. For the residents of Boulder City, if you see people, uh, kids vandalizing our, our our equipment or anything else like that, give the police a call. Um, we're spending a lot of money with our janitors keeping our restrooms clean because they trash the restrooms and they destroy and burn, you know, our playground equipment. Uh, it just doesn't make sense to me. But uh, so if you see vandalism, don't be afraid. You don't have to leave your name. Just call the police and we'll take care of it. We need to catch these uh, guys and gals and make an example out of them. Um, the, uh, I do have a couple pictures of, of some other stuff that we've done in the past. Here's a picture of, could we pass that out? Mm -hmm. A picture of what it looks like with the cattails removed as you look out the back, or the oh. back side. And then also, uh, we've had a request to put uh, a pet station on Georgia Avenue right by the bridge uh, right across from the apartments on, on Georgia. We've been having a lot of um, uh, dog walking in that area and the people haven't been picking up after themselves. So I asked Julie to make this happen and uh, we got Public Works to put a pet station there. And I walked my dog in that area and it's really made a difference uh, with people um, now that they have bags to pick up the waste of their dogs. So hopefully they'll continue to do that. and. Uh, that's a, that's a good thing. Uh, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Val, were you, did you have more? I guess I, I'm wondering, uh, with classes and stuff, should we, are, are we still getting American Rescue Plan funds for classes and stuff, or is that gone, or the American Rescue Plan funds, they're supposed to be paying for classes for little ones? Um, what they're paying for at the pool is um, free swimming, like open swim oh, for the youth, swimming. not the classes. Okay. But we're still getting some. I don't know when that would end or run out or whatever. December 31st, 2024, 2024. I believe. Oh, 2024. Okay, so it's going to be available, for hopefully. Well, we don't want kids to drown. We want them to take swimming lessons. What can we do to promote swimming classes? Okay, uh, Ms. Hess, do you have anything? No. Mr. Woodbury. Nothing. Mr. Pickens. Excuse me, I was looking at the email on that. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do you have any any questions or no, comments or either, yes okay and our last uh, item here is for, is open up for public comment again 
Uh, if anybody uh, has would like to make public comment on the phone, you may call 702-589-9629. Ms. Bonk, I assume there are no emails now? That is correct. Thank no you. Emails. <laughs> Again, this is the public comment period. You may call 702-589-9629 if you'd like to make public comment. This is the Parks and Rec Commission meeting final com public comment period. If you'd like to make public comment, you may call 702-589-9629. It appears we don't have any public comment. I'll adjourn this meeting. Thank you, uh, <laughs> staff and commission members for, for uh, your time. Thank you. All right. This was a short meeting. <laughs>